Hello, everyone, and welcome to our video on HIV drugs. Woo! All right, so this topic is super dry and boring. So I'm just going to try to get to the high yield facts so that you can um, just pick out the right answer out of a multiple choice set. And so I'm going to be honest with you guys, most of this stuff I got from First Aid and Boards and Beyond. So all the credit for this information goes to those two sources and then sketchy as well. So first, let's get started by looking at the first aid page for the antiretroviral therapy. And the two most high yield classes of drugs are going to be the NRTI, which are the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and the protease inhibitors. So the way the first thing that you have to do is you have to recognize which ones are which. So the NRTIs, they end mostly in dyne. Lamivudine, lamivudine, stavudine, zidovudine, all this stuff ends in mostly dyne. And didanosine sounds similar. Those are the most high yield ones. And emtricitabine as well. So for these, the way that you remember them is you can use this picture from Sketchy. So they're all dining at a table. If you watch the sketchy video, all the NRTIs are dining at a table. And so every, anytime you see a name like, um, who is this? Zidovudine or Dadanacine, it ends in ein or dine. Emtricitabine, right? Emtricitabine over here. So that's how you remember. And the rest of them, the rest of the high yield things you have to know are specific side effects that are caused by these drugs. So for that, let's go into the boards and beyond notes that I took. And let me tell you about those. So basically, all of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, they, um, the way that they work is they block DNA from being synthesized. So they act like DNA bases and like nucleosides and nucleotides. And they prevent the DNA from getting longer once they get incorporated because they don't have this three prime hydroxy group, hydroxyl group. And all of them are nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors because they consist of nucleosides, which are just um, two, are just the, the ribose sugar. And what's the other thing? Don't even remember. But the only one that's a nucleotide is the one with one phosphate on it. So it has to get phosphorylated two times instead of three times, which the nucleosides have to get phosphorylated. So since they all block DNA synthesis, some of them inhibit this other enzyme, DNA polymerase gamma. So in our own cells, I think we have DNA polymerase one, two, and three, I don't really remember, but DNA poly polymerase gamma is the one in mitochondria. And so they're gonna cause mitochondrial toxicity. And a lot of these drugs have side effects of purple neuropathy, myopathy, and lactic acidosis. So lactic acidosis is an important one because it can kill you. If you have too much lactic acid, you know, your, your enzymes lose their optimal pH and it's not good for you. So if you see lactic acidosis in the patient presentation, you, can, you have to think about toxicity from um, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. And if we go back to our sketchy video, where was it? Over here, we can see that this lactic acidosis is represented by this rotting um, jug of cow's milk. And so that's one way you can remember it. Also, you can remember some of the other symptoms like peripheral neuropathy with this glove and stocking, um, sort of Lancelot wearing the gloves and stockings. Also, zidovudine causes bone marrow suppression. So you can look at this image here. And the other really high yield one is didanosine, Sardan, which causes pancreatitis. Another random association to know is that abracadabra or ab uh, whatever that thing is called. Let me see what, what does it say on the side here. Um, abacrevir, right? It's it's associated the side effect, which is fever and a rash, is associated with this HLA B fifty seven O one. So you just have to remember that. And also stavudine or this guy Steve and zidovudine, they they both cause cause um, distribution of fat central adiposity in like a patient's belly. And so those are the biggest high yield associations with NRTIs and it's super boring, you just have to remember them. So you can use this sketchy image and you could use the notes that I took here to remember these side effects. 
And so with that, let's move on to the protease inhibitors. So the way to remember protease inhibitors is um, and their main side effect, their main side effects are hyperlipidemia and hyperglycemia and insulin resistance and fat redistribution. So all of this stuff kind of reminds you of eating too much food. You know, you have a lot of fat in food, you get hyperlipidemia, even though it's not really how it works directly, but it just kind of helps me remember that hyperglyceridemia, hyperinsulinemia, and fat redistribution happen with protease inhibitors. So protein is like, reminds you of thinking a lot. I mean, eating a lot. So you get these, these symptoms. Um, also, another side effect that you have to remember that's high yield is indinavir. Indinavir causes kidney stones. So ind in the front of indinavir is similar to kidney stones, right? And so for these patients, you want to keep them well hydrated so they don't get kidney stones, right, from indinavir. And another high yield thing, I don't know if you're going to get asked this, is ritonavir. It inhibits cytochrome P450. And you can give this in combination with other drugs, other protease inhibitors at smaller doses. So because cytochrome P450 is inhibited, these other drugs, they stay in higher concentrations in the blood. So you don't have to give them as much. So you can give ritonavir in a combination. And let's see what first aid has to say about these drugs really quickly before I move on. It talks about protease inhibitors here, and it mentions the ritonavir thing. That's it. And you have to remember what they do, obviously. So protease, remember, is the, the protein that cleaves all the different proteins from the ENV, pole, and GAG. All of these proteins here, ENV, pole, and GAG. And you just have to remember the mechanism of action, their common side effects. And with that, you should be able to eliminate a lot of choices from a multiple choice questions or you should be able to identify the choice right away, the correct answer choice right away. And if you want practice questions, I can give you guys screenshots of practice questions, which are right here. So if you wanna see if you can apply what I just told you and get these questions from Rx, right? It's right here for you. So <clears throat> I'll pause between each question and then but you see the answer. Next one. Next one. Next one. Sorry, this isn't ideal, but you can kind of block out these things if you want to screenshot them and not look at the answer. And that's it. And with that, guys, that's a really quick high yield overview of the. Um, the high yield stuff for step one when it comes to HIV antimicrobial therapy. That's it, guys. All right, good luck studying.